See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Beware of them, them. Who are they? They don't sound very hospitable, do they? Today we hear Jesus call the 12 disciples and commission them to go do work in his name. The harvest is plentiful, Jesus says, but the laborers are few. Jesus calls them to be laborers and to go out into the harvest, but it won't be easy. Go do the work I am giving you to do, but know that they won't all be ready to accept you. Go take almost nothing with you, trust in the goodness of people, and expect hospitality, but you won't always find it. Would you want to be sent out with these kinds of conditions? Probably not. But here we are, laborers in the field, sent out by nature of our baptism to preach the gospel and to speak of the love and hope of Jesus Christ to all. We know firsthand just how hospitable the world can be or not be. We're seeing a new mission field emerging today all around us as people rise up calling for our nation to be hospitable, calling for our nation to stop pretending issues of racism and privilege don't exist, calling for everyone to understand that black lives do matter and to finally do something about it. The laborers are becoming many, and we are called to walk next to our African-American brothers and sisters and stand with them against injustice and call for this country and its people to show radical hospitality. That's our theme today in the readings, and it couldn't come at a better time, a time when we need to hear it and learn it and do it. Hospitality was a sacred obligation in the ancient Mediterranean world, and one of the best examples we have of it is what we heard in Genesis this morning. Abraham and Sarah receive a visit from three men, identified both as the Lord and then as three individuals. How Abraham and Sarah respond shows not only hospitality to humans, but to God. Abraham rushes to greet these guests, gets water so they may wash their feet, has food prepared for them, and invites them to sit in the shade to escape the heat of the day. They have come to share a message that God has remembered them and that Sarah would provide an offspring for Abraham. And remember, earlier in Genesis, Sarah had given her maid Hagar to Abraham so that a son could be born to him and Ishmael is born. But the Lord comes this time to remind them that a son will be born by Sarah, as promised by God. How could something so amazing happen now, they think? And Sarah laughs at the thought that she would have joy in her old age. The verses skip ahead and we learn that Isaac is born. Isaac meaning God laughs and the promise is fulfilled. Were Abraham and Sarah ready to accept what the messengers of God brought them? Were they prepared? They certainly were prepared to receive their guests in the only way they knew how, by showing hospitality. And by opening themselves to show these strangers hospitality, they opened themselves to be ready to receive the news they had to bring. They opened themselves to trust in God and believe. Jesus asks the same thing of the disciples. 
Go out and bring my word to the people. Not everyone will be ready to hear it, but I bet those who first showed hospitality to them were also open to listen to them and hear what they had to say. Jesus calls the twelve and commissions them in his name. He gives them the same authority he has so that they can do what he has been doing up to this point. Jesus' focus is narrow for now. Go only to the house of Israel, he tells them. Just as he had been sent, so he sends them to reconcile the lost sheep of Israel back to God. Later in Matthew, we will hear the call to go to all people even those outside of the house of Israel. But for now, keep it close. Jesus tells them to go to the same people he has gone to, proclaim the same message, heal as he has healed, exercise demons, raise the dead. He gives them his authority. He gives them his authority and tells them how they will travel. A radical idea for its time. Go totally empty bearing only the message of hope from Christ. You will receive your reward in food from those who accept you peacefully. For those who do not, you must accept this and move on. Carrying anything else will only hinder you. But traveling this way makes them vulnerable. And being vulnerable while bringing the radical message of Jesus will make them targets for those who feel challenged and are not ready to receive the word of God. Is it much different today? Those who show no hospitality are typically the ones not ready to hear what Jesus has to offer. They are not ready to love, not ready to open themselves to let love in, not ready to admit they may be wrong. Isn't that what we do When we aren't ready to accept change, we close ourselves off to it, say we're not going to do it. But when we do begin to listen, when we do begin to understand, we see change is not always a bad thing. And we might find that bringing certain changes can make the world a better place. I believe that is where we find ourselves right now, in the midst of big changes. Something has to change for us to go on. We have to admit that we as a nation have been wrong for a long time, for a lot to continue. We have to admit that we have not done enough to combat the brutality that has taken place and put a stop to it. As followers of Christ, it is our duty to offer hospitality to all. I do believe that we are witnessing a new mission field, one in which people are finally starting to listen. All over the country and here as well in Kansas City, we are hearing about meetings between civic leaders, police, and protesters. We are hearing about some changes starting to be made in police tactics. We are seeing black and white people standing together to overcome racial injustice and saying once and for all that black lives matter. We have to believe that and understand that and do something about it, finally. We are hearing the cries for more symbols of racism to come down whether it be statues in cities and parks, or names on buildings, military bases, monuments, and streets. Just as the disciples were sent out, they soon learned that some were open to hear what they had to say, and some were not. We have leaders today who are open to hearing and ready to listen, and we have others who are not. We must keep going. We must not stop. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are standing at the ready. This new mission field is before us, not only for working for a change in how we treat one another, see one another, respect one another, but also working for a change in how we can be the church in an ever-evolving world, and particularly a world still involved in a pandemic. 
how can we continue to bring the hope that is Jesus Christ to a world that may not be ready to hear it? It starts with us. Are we willing to go out into the harvest? Are we willing to speak the truth to a nation and world even if they are not willing to listen? I hope we are. We have to be. We have to speak so that the voices of those who have been silenced for too long can be heard. We have to show hospitality and allow ourselves to be vulnerable so that we can be strengthened by the love of Christ and then share that love. We in this country are on the brink of change. Let us all be willing to be the sheep sent out in the midst of wolves. Let us be willing to stand with those who fight injustices and stand against those who continue to perpetuate them. Let us be willing to speak of Christ in order to put aside hatred and bitterness and hold up love and hope. Let us be willing to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And then, then, let us be willing to go and do. Amen.